Welcome, welcome, welcome once again to Redhead Takes. Today we're doing another divisional breakdown, this time the NFC South. Now, this division has been going back and forth for most of the years, although Tampa Bay did win back-to-back -back years, but relatively in the last decade or so, it's been up and down, up and down. Someone different seems to be winning it every year like the NFC East. Um, there's probably one team in here that you can probably guess is probably not going to win, unless some miracle happens, but... Uh, we're going to go through every team as usual. I'm going to go through every all their key additions and subtractions. And then I'm going to rank them 1-4, one, one to four, who wins, and maybe see if any of them can make a wild card addition as well. Which I think there's a decent chance that a wild card team could come out of this division. But we shall see. But let me know what you think, and let's get into it. Starting with the number one team for a third year in a row. I'll be beat Tampa Bay. Now, I know um, with Baker Mayfield... It's been an up and down proposition as well. One year he does good, the next year he does bad. One year he does good, the next year he does bad. But I think he's found a good uh, good team here in Tampa Bay. Still got Mike Evans, one of the best wide receivers in the league, and def definite bona fide Hall of Famer when it's all said and done. Chris Godwin, probably not there yet in terms of Hall of Fame, but if he keeps putting out the numbers that he has had over the past couple of years, he'll probably be there too. A great... Running back in Rashad White, a good offensive line, especially with some new additions from the draft. But yeah, we have Grant Barton is just what they needed at center. He'll be a great addition as well. And another Ed Rusher, oh, offensive guard, uh, Ben Bredesen. I don't really know much about him. Hired gun, Randy Gregory. Now he's kind of been up and down ever since his contract was canceled by Denver. But... And Jordan Whitehead, as always, wherever he's gone, he's had decent minutes at safety. Key losses. Carlton Davis will probably be the biggest loss. Is a good secondary corner. Devin White was great in their Super Bowl run, but he's been nothing but shit in the past couple of years. A lot of his flaws have really shown up a lot. And Ryan Jensen, who re retired from injuries, That'll be a loss on the offensive line, but like I said, Graham Barton should be able to fit right in that spot. But, I mean, they have a great offense. That defense, it still has its moments as well. I still think they should be a great defense. Um, we'll see what happens, but I gotta be honest. They they just look like the best team. You would think as a, as a fan of the Saints that I would pick them, them to win, but it's just... Saints need to rebuild, but they just don't want to rebuild. So we will next go to our second team, New Orleans, who made a lot of really good additions that I really like that should go a long way. But again, like I said before, the Saints need to rebuild more than they do need to retool because of all the fucking debt that they have. But Tuis Fuaga will be a great offensive lineman. Another great choice, something they absolutely needed. With Ryan Ramchek potentially retiring in the future with because of injuries. Uh, Willie Gay Jr., great linebacker, had a lot of good moments in Kansas City. Uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry will, could be a foundational piece at a corner for the, for the foreseeable future. Spencer Rattler could be the heir apparent to Derek Carr. Um, apparently there's been a lot of good things to say about him in camp. I don't expect him to beat out... Uh, Derek Carr by any means this uh, season. I think it'll he'll need a little bit of seasoning for him to really take the next step because well, also because you're paying Derek Carr a ton. You're not going to sit a guy like Derek Carr when you're paying him a ton and he's not that bad. But Derek Carr, some people pointed this out that he's either the best worst quarterback or the worst best quarterback because he's so mid. He's so mid. He still has never uh, reached Pro Bowl in his 11 years. And it's amazing to think he's been in the league that long. I mean, truly, it is a miracle to think he's been in the league for that long. But it's important to remember, he had a lot of bad years in Oakland and then Las Vegas. I mean, he is a good quarterback, no doubt. But in years in the past, he's been up one game. He's had a really good game. Then the next couple of games, he does nothing for no real reason there's no real reason why at times he just looks terrible out there he just there's really no reason for it 
and we have our departures Marcus May I remember when he came to the Saints last year thinking he'd be a good piece but had his suspension and then didn't do much after that to be honest uh Andrews Pete I mean he was a de decent offensive lineman but to be honest just I never liked him all that much after his first couple of years he got his big contract extension which I thought was a mistake and now they're finally free of it um Michael Thomas yes it sucks to see him go he still had the most receptions in NFL history in a season but after that he got injured he became a head case well he's always been a head case he's always been a head case so in the long run, I don't think they'll miss him too much just because he's kind of washed up at this point. We'll see what he can really do um, for any team that he's with this year. But And then James Winston, never liked him. Um, had his moments at times, but still was still the interception machine that he always has been from his days in Tampa Bay. But I think they still have enough good defensive pieces that yes, they're growing long in the tooth for sure, but Cameron Jordan is still good. Have a nice defensive piece. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to mention Chase Young, great addition too. Yes, there's a 13 year per year million dollar cap hit, but it's one year. If he doesn't do well, he's gone. But if he hits, he could be a huge asset, especially helping Cameron Jordan coming off the other side, having Cameron Jordan and um if we get Chase Young like he was during the end of the season for San Francisco, it could be really a big boost for them. They still do have pieces on defense, so they, they kind of fall apart at times. I think a lot of the problems last year for the Saints were the offensive line, but Tolis Bulaga should help, help with that. They still have a decent offensive line besides that. It just needs to all come together, and Derek Carr needs to finally get out of his way and prove that he is actually is a really good quarterback. I mean, he is. He is. He definitely is. But can he get past his up and down personality that he has had since his days in Oakland? We shall remain to be seen what happens. Next, we have Atlanta. I know a lot of people are saying, oh, Atlanta's going to win. Atlanta's going to win the division because they have everything. They have a quarterback now. They have all these weapons. They're, they're miraculously going to be great. They still did it fix the key problems that they had. The defense still has issues, and there's no doubt about it that you won't hear an Atlanta Falcons fan tell you or agree with you that that's the case. They just won't do it. Now to go over their additions, we have Kirk Cousins, who's great, who should be really good for them. I just wonder if um, Michael Pen Penix was drafted because uh, the potential of Kirk Cousins not being full all the way back from his Achilles tear. It remains to be seen. I think I think it will still be fine. I think it will still be the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons all year and next year and probably the year after that. I think it will take a little bit for Michael Penix to get into, into the right rhythm, but he is a good quarterback just with a very, very lengthy injury history that um, should not be discounted. It really should not be discounted how many injuries Michael Pennick Jr. has had over his career. And it doesn't mean that he can't be good. It doesn't mean that he can't even be great. It'll just take some time. Plus, the amount of money you're giving Kirk Cousins, you're not just going to hand the ball right to Michael Pennick unless uh, Kirk Cousins really is that injured. And if that's the case, it could be one of the biggest blunders in NFL history, which, you know, Falcons are not unaccustomed to that. Uh, we also have um, Darno Moore, decent wide, wide receiver. Rondo Moore should be a nice number three. Uh, like I said, Michael Penix should be good. I just, he's probably not going to start, but he'll he'll be a good back. He could should be a solid backup, and maybe just maybe he might see some starting action. I don't see that as a real possibility this year, but you know. Stranger things have happened. They lost Cordero Patterson, who had a good run with them for sure, but was kind of um, made obsolete by Tyler Algier. Um, Jonu Smith, one of the best, worst tight ends out there. I mean, you would think with the body type like Jonu Smith that he would actually be able to do really well, but he never did. He always fell short. 
didn't score a lot of touchdowns, always looked kind of slow out there, even though it's like this big-bodied man should be having close to a 1,000 yards every year. I mean, he's still secondary to Kyle Pitts, of course. But even Kyle Pitts. I'm going to talk about Kyle Pitts a little bit. Kyle Pitts needs to bring it this year. He had a great rookie year, but not a lot of touchdowns. And if you look at his stats, every year he's progressed, he's gained more touchdowns, but less yards. So is it doesn't really matter. Is that, is that something unique? Probably not. But, you know, it's just one of those weird things in for uh, Kyle Pitts that just, like, hmm, makes you really scratch your head. I mean, when you draft a tight end like him at fourth overall, you expect him to be Gronk. You expect him to be George Kittle. You expect him to be even Tony Gonzalez, who he had for a short time at the end, end of his career. But he just hasn't been that. I don't know why. A lot of it has to do with the quarterback situation, for sure, and Arthur Smith's mi- mismanagement. So, But I think Raheem Moore is a retread. He's a retread at coach. Not saying that he can't be successful, but I just think he's a retread. And... He's going to still have the same problems, as always. And let's talk about the defense a little bit. Michael Penix Jr. could be a good pick, especially if Kirk Cousins doesn't turn out well and Penix shows that he can be a real star like he did last year at Washington. But, but, I think the better pick, honestly, would have been Dallas Hurt. They need an edge rusher. They really need one. They added some pieces on defense this year, but I don't think it's going to be enough. I still think their defense is going to be middle tier, maybe a little below below that, but they're not going to be a top 10 defense this year. They're just not. I just don't see it. Their offense should be a top 10 or maybe a top 15, maybe top 10 if all things work out well, but let's be honest. The Falcons are the most fool's gold team out there. Every time you expect them to finally do it, finally win their division outright, they fail. Every time they have something for it going for them, something weird happens, they're fucking 28 and 3, that'll never come off their backs until they win a Super Bowl. And that's a big monkey on your back to finally get rid of. I know none of the players from that team are even still here around, but still, it's a smell that lingers in the organization history. It just does. Now, I think the Falcons can be a good team, for sure. But I think, in terms of record, they'll probably be 9-8. I think, at best, they can be 11-6. and six. I think that's definitely a definite possibility if everything out works out well. But if it doesn't, 9-8, and 8-9, eight, eight, maybe it were 7-10. and 10. They're going to be right around there in the thick of it for a potential wildcard spot, seventh wildcard spot for sure. But when it's all said and done, I think they still miss the playoffs. It'll be close, but I think they miss out. And it's going back to the Saints, I think they probably finish around 10 and 7 too. I think the Tampa Bay Buccaneers probably finish around 10 and 7, 11, and 6 as well. I don't think there's a team in the NFC South that will finish above 11 and 6. I think 11 and 6 for any team in this division is the best that could possibly happen. Maybe not Carolina, but we'll get to them shortly. But I think Tampa Bay, New Orleans, and Atlanta will be battling for the first spot. They all have a reasonable shot. Don't hate me, Atlanta Falcons fan. They're just being honest. Your team has a shot to win the division. It just it's gonna take a lot of things going right for that to happen. And next, the last but <laughs> certainly least, Carolina Panthers. Who, if you're asking me, I'm looking at two wins tops, maybe three. They're gonna be top or num probably the number runner for the runner for the northern one overall pick. And uh, <laughs> Bryce Young. I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's a decent quarterback, but he got drafted by the absolute worst organization. And last year sure showed that, um, put a, put a ding on his once shining, uh, light. Um, I'm not going to give up on Bryce Young. It's only one year. It's not fair to just throw him into the garbage after one year. But let's be honest, that organization is garbage. 
how they made some good draftees. Jonathan Brooks, probably one of the best, probably the best running back in the draft. But again, I don't have a lot of pieces on that offensive line. Offensive line is getting better, slowly but surely. They have some pieces there. But largely, it's going to take him a while to really get into it. And especially if you're looking for fantasy advice on Jonathan Brooks. Middle rounds, um, 10, 14, probably a good spot for him if he's still available. If guys are drafting him in the 7th or 8th round, I think that's a little high just because he does have talent for sure. He is a great looking back. I just think it'll take some time, especially because the team is not going to be very good. Xavier will get, will be a good wide receiver for them. Again, it will take him a little bit. I don't see him as a real fantasy option. I'm going to see you're looking for really deep options. Uh, Deontay Johnson should be a good wide receiver, but he'll probably, but he's not a real number one. He's a number two at best, probably. Yes, he was a number one in Pittsburgh, but let's be honest, I still, uh, not the biggest fan of Deontay Johnson, even though, strangely, it, he just, was just the most competent wide receiver for Pittsburgh for a couple years. But, um, again, he has Bryce Young throwing to him, and unless Bryce Young takes a big jump, I don't see a lot of real good potential there. Um, Damian Will should be a nice offensive lineman for sure. DJ Wanham should be de- decent uh, uh, defensive line help. But Jadavion Clowney is always good as a hired gun for a couple of games. But from their additions, they're still a long ways away from really getting over the top. Now for losses, Von Bell should be a decent loss on the defensive end and safety. Dante Jackson was, I believe, was the longest running or it's the, uh, active player on the Carolina Panthers. Still, the last one from that Super Bowl when he was a rookie against the Broncos, I do believe. And Brian Burns. Now, a lot has been said that in 2022, the Carolina Panthers could have gotten multiple first-round picks if they traded Brian Burns. Now they trade him for basically nothing, and they lose out big time. Lose on their one key defensive piece. I mean, he's had a really decent career, um, and we'll see what he does in the Giants, but the Panthers are going to miss him big time. They are going to miss him big time for sure. But yeah, the Carolina Panthers... Made some additions, made some definitely good steps in the right direction, but again, it's, it's not going to get them above more than three. Okay, I'll give them more four wins, but I just don't think there's a lot of hope here as long as their owner is their owner. I mean, David is just terrible. He. <laughs> He is just one of the worst. He is probably the worst owner in sports, and he's one of the, he's he's a hedge fund guy. He just he's made a lot of money, and he thinks that oh because I run a hedge fund, I can run an NFL team. It's not the same thing. It's just not the same thing, and I mean, it's ridiculous how how much of an a hole he's been to the fans, how much of a clown he's been out there. He's just does whatever he wants yeah david tepper david tepper um tepper is just in terms of nfl ownership he's a loser he may be a smart guy he may be able to build and run a successful hedge fund but the nfl it's not the same thing it's just not you can't just expect the things to just roll on in you have to take advice from your team actually just go hands off if David Tepper went hands off, I think this team could be decent. But I'm sorry I forgot the coach's name, but he just seems like a guy that's destined for the bargain bin in two years. He just, he, he really does. If Let me know in the comments if who the coach's name actually is. I'm sorry, I don't remember his name. He's just so unspectacular as an NFL coach. And especially with this team, the Carolina Panthers, they're going to be one of the worst teams in the NFL again. Definitely made some good pieces. That'll just take some years to grow. And if Bryce Young ends up not working out, boy, could end up being one of the worst draft selections in NFL history. But mainly just because of, of situation, not because of pure talent, that Bryce Young doesn't have talent. He does. But it's just Frank Reich, 
quit after 10, like 10 games or so. He knew this team was going nowhere. He knew this team had no future. And he was right. They don't right now. They really don't. They have some pieces, like I said, but when it's all said and done, the Carolina Bands are going to be one of the worst teams in the league, more than likely, and Green Bay next year being the number one team again, or once again, just <laughs> this time don't trade your first round pick, okay? Don't trade it. You need it. You need every pick you can get in order to improve this team, but as, again, as long as David Tepper is running things, there's no success to be had for Carolina, but let me know what you think down below. Like, share, subscribe, comment, all of that. And let me know what you think. Going to be putting out a poll about which uh, draft or which uh, division I should do next. It's going to be, I have four more divisions to go. In the next two weeks, I'm going to have a lot coming out. So definitely look out for that in the future. Got more went to Packers practice today. So got more footage to be uploaded and shared. So let me know what you think of that. Dragon Balls, these videos every day. Brewers games when they play, and a whole lot more. But check out the channel. Let me know what you think. Have a great day, and as always, God bless.